it's recording. Okay. So, and your name, sir? Uh, John Warren. Play the bass in the band Reliant K. John Warren from Reliant K. Awesome. And I'm James Hester, a few artist promotions. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, first of all, it's August 1st, and we're here at Vans Warp Tour in Atlanta. Uh, the weather's kind of hot. And we, uh, what's it been like on the rest of the tour for you? It's been exactly that. Hot and muggy. <laughs> and like each of the dates, except for like one in Canada where it was actually nice. Oh. And then all the Canadian kids there were like, oh, it's so hot today. And we're like, whoa, this is perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been like... 95 and like 90% humidity. Oh, really? Like every day. Wow. My wife's from Detroit, Michigan, of course, right down the Canadian border. And, yeah. And it's like that. Um, I'm from the south. I'm from Tennessee. And and they do that. They go, well, complain about the heat. Uh huh. You're, you're like, what? Like, but, um, now, so, so that's it. It was Reliant K. Where's Reliant K from? Uh, originally from Ohio. Okay. Um, but most of the people live in, uh, Nashville now. Okay. Except me, I'm not, I'm the odd man out in Denver. In <laughs> Denver. Okay. Um, another artist I interviewed one time, Charlie Daniels, the country musician. He has a, a summer home out there here in Denver. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Who who are, who are what inspires you to write and play music? What do you do? Cool. Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> um. I mean, just just listening to any kind of music, um, you know, can be inspirational. And uh, there's new stuff coming out all the time. There are new bands that we're finding out about on Warp Tour that uh, that have been real inspirational for us. Um, there's this band uh, we'd like to talk about called Moving Mountains. We had never heard of them before, but uh, but they are just a fantastic band that we just found out about, and we we get to play before or uh, or after them a lot of days. And we'll, yeah, they're uh, they're inspirational, as are a number of uh, other bands on this tour. Well, um, what kind of got you into music? Who were some of your influences, and what inspired you? Uh, well, personally, I know um, I was like a huge uh, a huge Beatles fan. Like I would try and figure out a bunch of their songs on guitar and you know uh, mm-hmm. that was when I was just first starting out I know for uh, for some of the other guys it was like uh, Beach Boys um, back in the day and like the early Christian punk rock scene like uh, like MXPX and Goatee Hook and Slick Shoes and all these mm-hmm. and, you know, might be familiar with um, yeah just uh, loved loved all those bands we covered you know a bunch of their songs Oh. And what do you like most about playing music in your band? These are so general. You can go anywhere with these questions. Well, so some of it I'm trying to be kind of open, you know. Yeah. Sort of um, not to, not to, to eat up the whole day in time, but it's uh, you know just because uh, like some stuff like I could ask you a question that's pleasant, like so do you like coffee? No, you know, period. It's uh-huh. like I don't. It's closed ended, you yeah. see what I'm saying? I'm trying to Get probe your mind. Yeah. Are you getting that, folks? I'm probing you. <laughs> okay. Actually, I got a master's. Good. <laughs> I, I, I used to be a professional counselor, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I got a master's in rehabilitation counseling. Wow. So that's the, that's the counselor in me wanting to fill your. You want to really get in there. Yes, get in there. Yeah. The <laughs> so, what, what do we like about playing music? What's the best thing about being in there? Uh, I'll give you two. Um, kind of from both sides of it, like getting to write and uh, and when you get into the studio and you're like some of your ideas that you've been thinking about for months and months, maybe even years, you finally get to hear them played back to you. And there's there's really nothing like that, you know, just getting to uh, getting to create that way, um, layer upon layer. It's just it's awesome. It's organic. See, it's exciting. Seeing the fruits of your labor. So totally. Cool. Yeah. And then on the other side of that, when we're touring, you know, you take those songs that you just recorded and you're you're putting them in a live situation, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, kids have heard them, those songs, and they're they're singing them back to you, screaming them back to you, and uh, I don't know. There's there's no other 
other feeling you like that. It's just it gives you a ton of energy and so much fun. Um, do you have any favorite gear? Any particular gear? Or any particular stuff you like to use along the way when you're playing? Um, well, all my all my gear would be pretty boring. Uh, base stuff is just kind of it's just kind of there. Uh, a lot of times we'll bring out like um, accordions on the road. Like we did this song called Deathbed. Use those. We we've, we've done like trumpets. Um, a little thing that you blow into this little keyboard called a melodica. Those kind of things. Like we did a steel drum. What's about time? Sometimes we'll play on a, on a baseball bat. Uh, just like just just kind of random instruments like that. Kind of spice it up. You know? Oh yeah, it's trying to be a little bit of a different flavor. Totally. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I guess I was the only one where I like. See, I use heart key based samples. So sure. I not, what do you, well, I use uh, anybody I use, that sponsors like like you endorse any particular. Yeah, we um, I use Gallian Kruger stuff. Um, okay. I think they make awesome stuff. Um, use Fender guitars and uh, uh, okay. just, we just got some um, uh, Music Man stuff. So yeah, kind of cool you use Fender band. basses. Yeah, I use uh, a couple of P bases, uh, Road Worn and a, uh, and a Mike Dirt Signature Series. Oh, wow. Um, it actually sounds awesome. I love it. Um, oh. Kurt Mangan Strings, he's been uh, he's been giving us strings in, uh, in Pittsburgh quite a while and sound awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll see. Lately, uh, television media... <laughs> has been whining about the U.S. government possibly defaulting on its loans and shutting down tomorrow. How would this affect your music? How would it affect my music? Yeah. Uh, that would probably... <laughs> well, it wouldn't affect it directly until, you know, months or possibly years after, you know, the effects are really felt. Which mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and nobody is really sure what they would be specifically. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of speculating at this point. But I do know that, like, when the... Uh, when the housing market kind of collapsed and, you know, that whole bubble burst, um, it really affected music and it affected entertainment, you know, as, as a whole. Uh, but it definitely, it, uh, it hurt touring bands um, in a way to make it, like, a lot harder to tour, for sure. Okay. Just, just kind of across the board, it was a weird, weird thing that nobody really saw coming, but... It's like... A lot of touring bands need a place to stay, a place to crash, so that kind of affected that. Yeah, that, people had less, you know, disposable income to, to put into stuff like going out to see shows, you know, um, buying right. music. Right, gas being $4 a gallon, right? <laughs> That's a perfect yeah. example right there. Right. I mean, like, when I started touring, it was, you know, under $1.50 a gallon. Right. It's much more reasonable than, mm -hmm. you know, around 4 It's just, it's tougher for, for touring bands nowadays. Yeah, okay. Uh, your preference is Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Check. How about you? Depends on what mood I'm in, really. Mm. Growing up in the South, uh, it's Coke. And of course, my wife, like I said, is from Detroit, so it's always Pepsi. You know? okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. But, you know, and I, we're, we're in Atlanta, so I, I have to say Coke. Coke. <laughs> Don't they manufacture this drink too? Oh, maybe. Well, this is actually just water. Monster. Oh, it is. Yeah, they put uh, put water in these cans for promotion. It's monster only knew what you're doing with the cans. Okay, but talk about it with a uh, big D and them so they can recycle it. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'll I'll, I'll throw it at your bus. Yeah. <laughs> Using it to hold water when you're finished <laughs> with the soda. Okay. Uh, the vanilla or chocolate? Definitely vanilla. Vanilla. I'm a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pet hamster or pet lizard? Lizard. Oh, good question. I actually had a, I had some newts and a salamander growing up. I was real, real weird. <laughs> but I also had a pet hamster as well. So. Oh. I don't know what to say about that one. Lizard eat the hamster. The hamster eat the lizard. Or neither. No, they were they kept in their respective cages. Okay. Steak or pizza? I'm going to say pizza on this one. Pizza? Yeah. Nice. American or authentic? Like Italian? Like Italian yeah, or deep dish. Mm. <laughs> the 
depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I just want to go to Sabaros. Uh, Sometimes I, I want to go to Buka. Cool. Um, all right. How do you want your music to affect listeners? Um, ideally, um, we we want to make music that that connects with people on a you know on a deeper level rather than just enjoyment. You know, um, we've we've heard it said a lot of times that our our music has you know really impacted people's lives. The fact that they're thinking about killing themselves, some some line that has been in one of our songs will run through their minds and uh, it will stay in their hands, so to speak. That kind of thing, like, whenever I hear that kind of thing, it's just, you know, there are no words for that. It's just, uh, it's a humbling experience um, to know that your your music is going to be that that impactful in somebody's life, you know? Um Hopefully the, the themes of you know hope and redemption that are kind of woven throughout our music uh, will connect with people. Right. Um, I guess the, the last question, because I know it's, it's like some people you hear the term Christian band or Christian artist, and it, I respect your your faith and your beliefs, but I go, of course, how should I put it? Maybe it's it's too late in the game. I mean, you've been you've been you, you guys have been together now how long? It's about 98. It's about 98. Yeah. Um, now I know, okay, in the early days, like in the 90s, you guys were called Christian rock band. Mm-hmm. Now, now, is it is it more like, you know, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, that like, okay, we're a rock band with Christian members, or rock band that has Christian faith, but that's not our primary. Right. Or, or is it, hey, Christianity is a lifestyle, you know, you live it. What, 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 how would you respond to that if people would say, "Oh no, they're not a Christian rock band or whatever"? Um, or would you would you say you are a Christian rock band? I mean, what's your definition of that? Because I know that you've been associated with the Christian music industry for a very long time, mm-hmm. and I guess that was why I'm interested in, in interviewing you and covering you. Because, like I said, I help promote Christian artists and musicians. Yeah. Um, we've kind of gotten to a place where we we don't really care what. You know how we're classified, what uh, we're, what pigeonhole we're kind of put into. Right. If you're if you're more comfortable saying that we're a Christian band, it's totally fine. Um, as far as as we're concerned, um, yeah, we're we're Christians. Our faith is hugely important to us, and that definitely comes across in our music as well. You know, um, so if you want to call us a Christian band, it's fine. If you want to call us a a band with Christian people. Whatever. It really doesn't matter to us, to be honest. Um, I know that, that a lot of times it's it's easier for, I don't know, one, one part of the industry just to be able to kind of make that demarcation, um, to put that stamp of approval on, onto a, you know, a certain band's music. Um, so I understand the need to want to call certain music Christian. I get it. Like, I, you know, when I was, when I was a kid, I would go into, like, my Christian bookstore and you know, s- search out for those those artists. Um, so I, I understand that, but I just, to me, I just, I think it's unnecessary. It's for like marketing purposes. Totally. And and. But the, you know, it's not it's not offensive to me. Right. And I mean, I was just curious about that. Cause, I mean, I've interviewed other other bands before that were well, like Charlie Daniels or, or the band Red. Yeah. The same with with the, with the Jason guitar player. He was like, well, you know, we're Christians, and we're in a rock band, but that's really not like, we're not coming here saying, oh, we're a Christian band. Or, but there's so many, I guess, labels, like it's just for demographic and marketing purposes in the industry. It's like, you don't want to limit yourself. I mean, it's like, hey, this is who I am. I'm a Christian, and I have a Christian faith. And you want to, you know, express that in your music, but then 